these other epistles, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, etc., are addressed to Israel after the gathering together. And, of course, there are many magnificent truths that apply directly to us and can be applied of us. And yet the great bulk of the revelation, and I've given you some examples over these weeks, are addressed to Israel after we are gathered together when they are surviving the times of wrath on this earth and being rejuvenated again as a ecclesia of the bride, which does not exist today, despite what the news media and all the stupid evangelists try to tell you, that those people over there in Israel are God's chosen people. They sure as hell aren't. Look at how they think. Look at how they live. They aren't God's chosen people. He can do a better job than that. It's all counterfeit. The word Jew is a bastardization of the word Judean. And basically, I've taught about this many times, but you have to get straight on that. If you think the Jews in Israel are the Israel of the Bible, then you'll never put the word together. You'll be always confused. Always confused. Because if they're already called back to the promised land, what the heck, why are we still here? Because my Bible teaches that they will be brought back together to inhabit Israel after we are gathered together. Last time I checked this morning when I got up and my back tweaked me, I'm not in a new body yet. How about you? So that stupidity doesn't hold any water. That's That's got sieves all over it. That's like using a fishnet for a water bucket. That doesn't hold anything. And yet they still believe it because they're mind-numbed and mind-dumbed by the trolls that teach them that lousy jive. And they're still inhabited with conundrum and paradox and enigma. And they have learned to live with their contradictions. And that's a terribly dangerous thing to do. They have given in to the contradiction. They have thrown up their mental hands and say, oh, well, I guess I'll never understand that. And they they go to that lame brain, asinine cliche, which priests and ministers have used for centuries, to cover their own stupidity, well, you got to take it by faith. You know, that phrase isn't anywhere in the Word. I don't take anything by faith. I believe it or I don't believe it. And to believe it is to be fully persuaded. The religious jargon and patois and excuses of the Christian realm would, as my dad used to say, would drive a dog off a gut wagon puke inducing it's nauseating it's got to be nauseating to the father that's why we are the sweet smelling savers the rest of that stuff those other people are these other so-called christians they're just walking dumpster fires dumpster fires just burned garbage slimy as boiled garbage boy we're rolling the figures now aren't we slimy as boiled garbage are these men and women false prophets false teachers They're not fit for the dunghill. So, Jesus Christ was not a Jew. Neither was Abraham. The concept of Jew is relatively modern. They came out of a Khazar empire around the 8th and 9th centuries off the steps of what we know as Russia and migrated into Eastern Europe when Genghis Khan kicked their ass and ran them off. And out of that, and they had adapted Judaic Phariseeism as their state religion, so they took all that knowledge of the Old Testament and all that legalism into Eastern Europe, and I don't know how the adversary does it, but man, you got to admire that old dumb bird. He manipulated that thing into now where you can hardly find a man on the street, a person in the church that even wants to consider the truth of what you and I know, and what Dr. Werbel, bless his heart, clarified for us. Thank God he did. I'm not sure I'd have figured it out on my own. It would have taken me a heck of a lot longer. And, of course, in the back of Jesus Christ, our Passover is that great appendices that shows you the bastardization of, Jude, of the word Judea into the word Jew. And it's just a cheap, jargonized term to fool dumb Christians to make us pour billions of dollars into our 51st state over there as if it's a holy, eternal, 
represent holy eternal responsibility like Jimmy Carter said. I heard him say it myself on national TV outside the White House that we have an eternal purpose to protect Israel. What another dumb born-again moron. Likewise, all the presidents since then, maybe some of them have done it purely out of political mode. Well, I'd like that better than the stupid Christian nutsos. I've heard them all on TV raising millions of dollars to send to Israel. You might as well pour it out of your boot into your outhouse hole. It's much real good it does. Now, if they can be a strategic help to us to kick some butt from the enemies of our country, fine. But don't tell me they're God's chosen people because they're not. I refuse to be as stupid as all of these evangelical ministers that I got away from. I refuse to be that damn ignorant. How about you? Man, oh man, does that get my blood boiling. Because it wrongly divides the word. You can't fit the word together. We aren't going through the wrath. We're delivered from the wrath to come. If Israel's been returned to their homeland, then we're in a, we're in a labyrinth. We're in a maelstrom of chaotic confusion. And essentially, we're just blowing gas working the word like this. It has no purpose if those idiot, renegade, uh, hard-hearted, political, religious, possessed morons are God's chosen people. Now, that doesn't mean people from the so-called Jewish cultural background are all bad people. Of course not. Some of you come from that background, bless your heart. But you believe God and got born again and filled with the Spirit We all come from some cultural background. All of us do. What the hell? We didn't just show up. We're not cyclones. We're not cyborgs. Sure, we all come from some cultural background. Just don't give me that crap about Jew or Arabs being God's chosen people. Nuts to that. It's got nothing to do, essentially, with the genetic bloodline. Because the spirit trumps it all. The body holds the same relationship to the reason as reason does to the spirit. Spirit trumps all. That which is of the flesh is flesh, and that which is of the spirit is spirit. Spirit holds prevailing regnancy. It doesn't matter your genetic bloodline. It matters to the point that you wouldn't be here without it. Sure, it matters to that point. But everything has to be precisely divided. It doesn't overrule what the Word says. God didn't magnify your bloodline above his name. He didn't magnify your so-called blue blood family screwed up gnarly tree above his name. The heck he did. He magnified his Word above his name. And it's the great Christ line through the Word and the great genealogies set in the Word that reveal so much of this truth. Second Peter 3. Did you think I forgot it? Here at the last gasp of his revelation before he fell asleep. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's spiritually. If you renounce hidden things, which they will be able to do, In the true Israel of the Sixth Administration, they will be able to speak in tongues and renounce hidden things. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation wholeness. See, they have to resist until their last breath if they expect to be in paradise of the future. Boy, that's a tough one. If they compromise, they lose it, at least to the best of my understanding. There could be some nuances there we just don't understand yet, but they will be martyred, and they will die for the truth. Well, some of us will be gathered together before we fall asleep, so there's a different administration going on there. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, wholeness. You know, in a way, that fits with us. We have to stand to be rewarded. Now, we're born again. We have the seed of Christ in you. And maybe they will, too, now that I think about it, because it's in 1 Peter 1.23 that says being born again, not of incorruptible, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. That's addressed to Israel after the gathering together. So thank God for that. So I may have misspoke there. But 
still reward. I know they will be martyred. They will have to resist unto death. And, of course, their reward, like ours, is according to our faithfulness. There you go. Okay, so we straighten that out. 